I'm going to ask that we turn to S120. And Jen is not yet here, but we do have a proposal that has come to us after some work by the advocates. And I'm going to ask Helen Laban and Devin Green if they're here. There you are. Good morning. Jen will be with us soon, but uh, perhaps you could give us uh, a, a quick insight into how you develop the language. And I haven't heard, I, I think I've heard from Sarah Teach out that this is agreeable. I've also heard that the AG and DFR are agreeable. So maybe the two of you could uh, help us understand the proposal a little bit. The, first the process and then the specific proposal. Uh, I, I would like to go first. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can go first. Uh, so okay. Helen Laban, Bi-State Primary Care Association. So the intent of this language change is to make it more clear than it previously was, what it was that we were trying to do. Okay. Uh, and let me just pull it in front of me so I'm not looking off screen. So we, we have it, we have it on page seven of our beginning on page seven of our the bill that um, Jen sent us and here is Sarah Teachout. Sarah Teachout is here in the nick of time. So um, we'll also look for your comments on this proposal, uh, Sarah. So Helen is starting off on the process and then what's here. Right, so, so as discussed uh, yesterday, I guess it was, uh, what our, our basic goal is to get ahead of the national changes or at least keep pace with the national changes that are happening around 340B participation with actions by both the pharmaceutical drug manufacturers and the PBMs around uh, this uh, federal program. So we have changed the opening of that report request to indicate that, that there will be a report on national activity that impacts 340B participation. Uh, and we have provided an example uh, of, the, of what we're talking about there in, in case we forget what was happening this time uh, of year when we look at it again. So including recent changes to how pharmaceutical manufacturers pay rebates to PBMs for prescriptions filled through 340B pharmacies. So that is setting the overall intent of what we're looking at. And then uh, again, as discussed in committee, we wanted to clarify that when we're talking about potential impacts, we mean all Vermont stakeholders. So that's gonna be both organizations like the pharmacies, um, the providers and the practices, the payers, and also impact on individual Vermonters because this is a complicated program. And by its definition, 340B is intended to ultimately uh, benefit uh, individual patients and Vermonters. And then we were, we are not simply collecting this information for our own amusement. The idea is that we will outline possible state responses uh, to these actions. And so the third component of the description of this report is to say that there will be a report on possible state responses to these actions um, around 340B. And we know that that's a complicated question, right? Because it is a federal program. So the example that we had of the um, administrative burden by Express Scripts that this legislation in bullet points one and two is addressing, that's an example of where there was a national conversation around a national action. It was determined that yes, states do have a role to play. Here's what it is. So the idea is that we are going to look forward to what those might be and anticipate them so that we are not uh, in the situation we are this year where we're trying to get something passed um, in, in, a, in a rapid fashion in response to changes. So that is how we are intending this report to happen uh, with uh, DFR and the Attorney General's office leading that because they do have the expertise and the national connections again to help inform that work. Hopefully that this rewrite clarifies the intent um, of this report. I don't know if Devin or Sarah have anything to add to my summary of our group writing process there. Devin, Sarah. Oh, Helen did great. <laughs> this is good to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Devin, you're all set then? I'm all set. 
Okay, so uh, so the language that we're looking at actually uh, is uh, two sections, section four, and then section uh, six. And the section four is repealed. That means that the um, requirements for a, a PBM that say shall not, that's repealed in on January 1st, 2023. So by that time, then some consideration of the report that's in section six would be available uh, and the legislature theoretically could have acted next uh, session, next year of the biennium in 2022. So that's the thinking with that. Okay, that's good. So um, bef uh, we are, we are going to wait until we have our ledge council to go through this with us, but I am greatly appreciative of the alacrity and the, uh, both the pace and the intensity uh, with which you all have worked. We understand that sometimes these issues come up at the last minute and we have tried to accommodate resolution as best we can in the in the bill and so hopefully this this will fit with us as it does with you oh so, thank you thank you we do really appreciate you taking this up we know it was the 11th hour and so thank you again it'll be really helpful right and we always get the blame for the 11th hour but you know it it, it this is the way it was this us the way, <laughs> this is the way things happen and i completely appreciate any understanding or lack thereof, <laughs> that's part of the job. Um, so I'm gonna reach out to Nellie, unless there are questions, are there questions here for the folks who have testified before we get to Jen? I, Madam yeah. Chair, I don't have a question. I just wanna thank you for making the language clearer. It's, it's much better than yesterday, so thanks. Totally. <laughs> We can even understand it. That's that's the good news. Uh, so, Nellie, I'm going to uh, reaching out a lifeline or uh, a, to a friend. Okay, good. Jen is going to be with us shortly. So, um, why don't we take a, a little break? Our, uh, the shortly. Okay. Let's take like a three minute break at the most. As soon as you see Jen on the screen, then we'll come back live.